you had to choose one word that described your ideal self and replace your name with that word, what word would that be and why? If you had to choose one word that described your ideal self and replace your name with that word, what word would that be and why? This was the prompt given to me by my graduate program's One Word Project, and it challenged me to reevaluate the words that I'd used to interpret my life. In the pursuit of this one word, I was given an opportunity to rethink about the power of words and how they shape our world. I had dozens of words, lists upon lists upon lists, and of those words, several stood out to me, and yet I had trouble making them feel authentic. Many a night, my friends and I would cruise the back roads of Northern California and just talk about life. On many of those nights, I took the opportunity to reflect on these words and see how well they fit. One friend in particular, Alistair, really gave me a lot of support and challenge on these words and take my dozens of words into a list of three that I want to share with you all today. The first word being Latinoa. For those of you first hearing this word Latinoa, it's a word that is a helpful descriptor to cultural heritage connectedness to Latin American countries. And as embraced currently, similarly to Latino and Latina, but as a gender neutral alternative. When I first spoke the word Latinoa, to me, it felt as though I had the answer. It felt like I didn't really need to do any more work. That is, until I started asking myself, am I Latino enough? One of the key factors that came up in my development and recognizing that I still struggled with was the use of the Spanish language. One of my mother's favorite examples of me using the Spanish language was when I was a child, every morning being asked, ¿Quieres huevitos? Or, would you like some eggs? And I would respond, ¿Quién es él? Or, who is he? <laughs> Sadly, this was an occurrence that happened quite often in my childhood, and for me, it hurt that I couldn't connect to my family through the use of the Spanish language. It also gave me an opportunity to look to loved ones like Selena Quintanilla Perez, who also recognized difficulties in embracing Spanish and did so eventually and over time, but also gave me the recognition that I could look to being Latino in different ways, particularly through music. In my journey through middle school, I recognized the opportunity to join a performance group called Ballet Folklorico, and it was amazing. When I was in high school, I had the opportunity to join a different kind of performance group, the mariachi band. And in college, I was approached by members of Lambda Theta Phi, Latin Fraternity Incorporated, and asked if I wanted to join a brotherhood that supported Latinos on campus and in the North Texas community. I became a Lambda, I joined the mariachi group, and I danced my happy dance during Ballet Folklorico in each of these ways because I felt that they helped me differently connect to what it meant to be Latino outside of Spanish. The challenges I still faced were when I connected with the global community in my capstone studies for the Japanese language and culture in Tokyo, Nara, and Hiroshima, Japan, when I would still get asked the question, why was Spanish speaking skills not a part of your identity development? I had to take a moment to step back from Latino and try on different words. See if there was another one that had similarly a number of experiences to express and expand upon, but really find one that fit better. The next word that came up for me was queer. Engaging and meeting new people in Northern Texas really gave me an opportunity to name and describe different experiences to attraction outside of women. It was during this time that I really took on the opportunity to explore words like gay, bisexual, and questioning, each of them like clothing, recognizing that there was something I liked about each one of them, having something that felt authentic to me in one way or another, and yet didn't quite feel comfortable enough. I was also frustrated that when I tried to use the word queer, I recognized I was forcing it to acknowledge the challenges and the frustrations I had with people calling me Mr and people using he, him, and his as part of my pronouns in everyday conversation. So how could I embrace queer as a word when in everyday conversation, when the people around me were using the word queer, they were using it to describe sexual and romantic orientation, 
not gender identity and expression. I struggled with embracing queer also because queer as a word, historically, and in the times that I was in grad school, especially, was used to hurt the people that I loved. How could I reconcile choosing a word that was so empowering and so disenfranchising? I had to take a step back and really think about the words that I was using, these dozens of lists that I'd created, and recognize that a majority of them were very identity-based. And the word that I was looking for was more abstract, something that felt like it could really describe all of my existence. The front runner of those abstract words being Odyssey, which I defined then at the time as a long journey with changes of luck. Odyssey gave me the opportunity to value that I had experienced many difficulties in my life and that there were changes of luck coming and hopefully would do that well after my lived experiences on Earth. Difficulties like naming that I was important to this world. Difficulties like being queer, Latinoa, and now some form of transgender all in one body and living in communities where people felt they had permission to commit acts of verbal and physical violence against me. Also, Odyssey recognized for me these changes of luck were short, slowly but surely coming to me. And then I quickly, in some ways more than others, recognized that folks were willing in my family, folks were willing in my college and educational experiences, and even in the workforce through my career development aspirations, that there were changes of luck happening for me and that that was part of who I was. And that that felt like Odyssey had been that much closer to describing who I am. And still, Odyssey didn't feel right. There was something that was missing from the way that Odyssey described experiences that was missing from my ideal self. One word. I was disappointed that English, Spanish, and Japanese, all languages that I had spent a number of years practicing and studying in different ways, didn't really offer me the ideal self I was looking for. In a different conversation with Alistair, when we were talking about the implications of theory and how lack of theory was really hurting our means of impacting and working with other students, I had a moment pop into my head. What if my one word doesn't exist yet? This sparked the drive for me to really think about, one, what is this ideal self that I see? And how can I use tools like the alphabets to really create and name those experiences and name that ideal self? After many, many long nights of crafting, articulating, and explaining different possibilities of a word, one finally came to mind, and one that I accepted and embraced as my one word. And that is Zozox, a definition of existence between translations. Zozox a definition of existence between translations. I finally had a word that validated the way that I saw my past, the way that I acknowledged my present, and the way that I foresaw my future, and how I anticipated my lived experiences to match those beyond my cognition. In addition to that, Zozox gave me the opportunity to name differently that it's okay for me to not fit the linguistic expectations of those around me, and that if the people who are around me love me enough, they will use the words that I would like for them to use. There was an overwhelming joy that came with finding the word Zozox, in part because it brought all of these emotions and it brought all of this reflection and revelation for me, and because I still had a few weeks left to submit my one word project. <laughs> and so for me, when I think about all the other kotobas in the world, kotoba being the Japanese word for language, I really took an opportunity to think about language in a different way, articulating what are the beauties of language that we often miss because we're so set on trying to find a word that fits best. I appreciate Japanese language in a very different way now because there are multiple words that the Japanese use to explain the English concept of love. And more to the point, it helped me realize that in finding Zozox, it's okay for me to name and to express to the world that there are words that I am connected to and through 
that either I don't know or don't exist yet. Zosox also challenged me to think about what it meant when I was a toddler. Imagine me as a toddler, thinking of the palabras that I was using at the time, probably didn't make much sense, but I was so excited at different times to see myself in the mirror and not meet the definition of the words that folks were using to describe me at that time. In recognizing that Zozox asked me to challenge myself on thinking of my identities and the nature of my identities, I was able to find other folks like Gloria and Zaldúa who give us permission in different ways to name that we can have multiple existences and none of those existences at the same time, in the same body, in the same experience. To me, I now recognize words as the locks and keys to our lived experiences. Words are the locks and keys to our lived experiences. Some of the words that are currently locks on me and my lived experience are racism, transphobia, and apathy. Some of the words that are the keys to my life are passion, amor, and zozox. Not all of the keys respond to the locks that I have in my life, and not all of the locks will have a key in this current moment, and likely the rest of my life. But for me, that is how I articulate and have rethought about the power of my words and the use of those words to be my ideal self. This is the result of my one word project. This is how I believe I am captured as my ideal self. I am Zozox. I am a definition of existence between translations. Zozox has given me the power to not only name my existence, but also to create other words. In fact, Zahis did not exist a year ago because that name had not been given life until then. It is a passionate moment for me because while I am living and presenting to you all today as Zahis, I also have this existence that is described for me as my former name legally. And so how I have to live consistently between my ideal self, who I am today, and who I am on paper. More to the point, what I appreciated so much about Zozox is that I was able to name that words had the power to change my life. I use the lessons of Zozox today to really think about how I approach my work in higher education, currently with fraternities and sororities on campus. I challenge you all to one day find your one word. And more importantly, I challenge you all to think about the power of your words. Rethink about the words that you hold, the words that you have, and the words that you handle. Words have the power to dehumanize and to hurt. Words also have the power to heal and revitalize. What will you do with your words? What will you do with your words? Thank you.